All right, the other possibilities in that little uh, story is you could decide to kill Joker. You would think if you do that, that would change everything and then the bad family would be after you, but no. Nope, you can kill the Joker and you just get this bit where Lex is throwing away the paper looking disgusted or sad or some shit, I don't know. I, I don't really think they were all that good of buddies. I think Joker was just somebody he had to use and he pissed him off, so I don't know why he's mad. Of course, there's no voice for Lex, but whatever. Um, then you see uh, Dr. Holly Quinn crying and stuff, which is weird because she's in the lab coat, but at this point, she's probably already become Harley Quinn, so I, I don't know why she's in a lab coat or whatnot. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I think this will happen before uh, Justice League Dark, but I'm not sure. Cause it is the exact same well, it's not the exact same story. You have the one that is the exact same story where they did that with the red, under the red hood. This was one where you can branch it and change it completely. Well, not completely. Well, yeah, kind of, I guess. There are some versions that you can change completely and one that is just basically the same thing except Batman is now talking to Superman at a cafe because... Why not? Fuck it. Um... Oh, right, the other thing you can do now, if you decide to kill Batman, he'll have a grenade in his hand hidden and blow you both up. Along with Talia. If you don't kill Batman, you still get the happy ending, regardless if you kill Joker or not. Which is the part where it's like, wait, what? The Bat Family is gonna be okay then, Jason. Knowingly killed the Joker. The other ones I get because he was fucked up and you know he's having PTSD he didn't realize what he was doing and he gets a psychological help for him and he's trying but here because he didn't kill Bruce you get a whole the whole same ending I'm kind of confused on that one but whatever you know it's fine it's not the one I chose I chose not to kill the Joker just put him back in jail and before anyone says the whole comment oh well we should kill him because Batman should kill him but the Joker the Joker should leave us it. it's not on his head it's on the fucking Gordon's head, pretty much. Actually, whoever the freaking uh, person in charge of everything, at some point it becomes, you know, I don't care how crazy this motherfucker is, he's killing people. At some point it's on the state and it just picks up the chair of the electrical injection and deal with jokes right there. <laughs> Lethal injection or some shit. I mean, goddamn. <laughs> why is it on the head of one, one rich asshole billionaire? Like, why is it his fault when the state is not? taking his business into consideration. It's like, yeah, this guy keeps breaking out and killing people. At some point it becomes, eh, just, just. <laughs> and yet you can make the whole arguments for rights and stuff because he is obviously insane and whatnot. But <laughs> he keeps breaking out and killing people. There's got to be a point where it's like, you know, hmm. <laughs> There's a way more on the state than it is on fucking Batman. Batman doesn't need to kill. Uh, I mean, if we have crazy mass murderers at a certain level, we just say, okay, done. <laughs> Our firing squad. <laughs> Something other than just. <laughs> anyway, uh, they had a. Uh, on that DVD, there's also this thing with uh, Death, uh, the character from the Sandman stories, where she visits an artist. It's kind of cute. I don't know. I'm not, Gonna go too much into that. It's kind of a depressing story, but it's kind of a good story all at the same time. Yeah, give that one the. Yeah, they should make that one a movie. But more and more scarce says he were watch that one and see what he says about uh, <laughs> these movies being just popcorn. It is more of a psychological bent. It's her dealing with somebody who's dying. Or she's gonna die that day, and she's taking him back, which is seeing him the whole day through and seeing different parts of his life where it got kind of fucked up and I guess this was just Destiny's way and she does run into a painting that frees him of the demons in his head. I don't know if there were literal demons that were just fucking with him or if this was just his personification of different people who dealt with him. But anyway, at the end she frees him of, of them before he dies and the painting survives. Even though his house burns down because he was smoking a cigarette when he died. 
It was a good story. I think it was JMD to be tasked to win it. Which explained why it was a good story and whatnot. And yeah. Definitely endless. It's going to be that. There's no. Well, there's kind of a bad guy, but it was four demon things that are like talking shit to the guy and the main character or whatever. I guess you could call it death. She is the main character, but she really just kind of sets things up, moves on, comes back. So she's kind of a visitor in this, but she is doing the thing. Um, decent. Uh, there's also one with the Phantom Stranger, which is pretty good, where he fights as a demon thing. Voice by the, oh yeah. Had a good voice to do whoever the Phantom Stranger is. The bad guy was voiced by the guy who voices Flash on the, uh, JLU, which is interesting. Um, I have some girl in there, Marcy or something. Yeah, she's the one that survives. In this hippie house, because what they have to have it in the 70s, because that makes no sense. With the Phantom Stranger, she was the only one who survived. She used her wits and finally defeats the monster, removing his necklace, which has the Midgard Serpent on it. I just go with the Midgard Serpent and realize this tale has also been done in something else with, uh, I forget, Marmaduke, Marmaduk, something. Some other religion that uses also this serpent that is basically this giant snake thing that's eating its own tail or dragon eating its own tail. That usually encompasses the earth, like it's around it and everything. And just, right. Anyway, really have anything to do with anything. She frees herself and she gets on with life. It's a decent little story. I'm not sure who the guy is who voiced. Uh, the Phantom Stranger, but he was good at his job. Uh, the dude from the JLU cartoon was good as a villain. I didn't recognize Michael Rosenbaugh in that role, but he did a good job there. Which probably works best, but I didn't recognize his voice. I probably should have, but eh, I wasn't paying attention. Uh, main character was good at what she did. She runs off with the heavy man later, and basically people with her are drawn like this fucked up version of the Scooby Doo gang. <laughs> they all die, except Mar Marcy here who just gets away. Nothing to do with the Daphne too, there's so, like, yeah. It's the whole gang plus her. So anyway, except for Scooby, there was no dog. Alright. Oh, there was a decent one with uh Sergeant Rock teamed up with uh the not the Hound Guy, what are they called? Uh the Monster Squad or something. Ah, fuck, I can't remember. Creature Commandos, that's what it was. Stop right there and do the next one. 